So I'm going to explain a very complicated, well it's not really complicated, but a lot of people don't seem to research it at all. And this is the common pleco, which a lot of people will say is hypersthemus plecostomus. And generally it now, the term actually, the common name covers ma the majority of hypersthemus around a 58 unclassified and classified species um, within the L number system as well. So there might be, end up L numbers being synonymized with other L numbers in one species name with descriptions, which will come out hopefully. And 15 to 16 species of Bacteria plithies, and there are some L numbers in there. It depends if 16 of you include anicity, which was synonymized with ambicity, but it's still a bit debatable. So, Hypersthenus plecostomus was actually exported from Venezuela, Suriname, and the Guyanas in 1960s, 1970s, whereas the Bacteria plithies was originally exported from Brazil and Peru, but now is more captive bred or even from feral stock in South um, South United States, more Florida, depends, I'm not familiar with the United States geography at all. Um, so this means that a lot of people aren't getting the fish they think they are or is even neighbours and a lot of stores do get confused. So the identify, uh, identification of hypersomus is actually challenging and within the actual genus uh, because the species do look very similar within that genus and the photos I've got are from Planet Catfish and they are from the Orinoco Basin which could represent according to Planet Catfish another species of Hypersomus which is very similar or closely related to Hypersomus plecostomus and even the scientists get it wrong on the NCBI database um, there's a Hypersomus plecostomus which comes up as a Pateria plithies um, but I won't go into identifying different hypersomus other than hypersomus robin, robini, which was also exported as a common pleco, and it doesn't really get talked about. So the term pleco also represents this hypersomus plecostomus, which we don't see. It is spotted. It's like a lighter tan colour of darker coloured spots. It's quite hard to explain, as the photos show. So how do you tell the difference between these two genuses, Tyrioplithes and Hypersomus? So Tyrioplithes has 9 to 14 soft dorsal rays, which is a lot. Um, and most don't have, and Hypersomus definitely doesn't have it. Its dorsal fin does tend to be longer and shorter. It has seven soft dorsal rays. Um, so that means that it's quite easy to tell the difference between the two genuses and what you're buying is never going to be, well very rarely going to be hypersomous. There are hypersomous in the trade which are not labelled as common pleco and you can see them. Um, also the cochlidons which were in the genus cochlidon which was then synonymised with hypersomous plecosomous to produce hypersomous cochlidon, hypersomous sonne and I think the rest are L numbers for memory. I'm not very good with hypersomous, it's a maze. So there's synonyms. So uh, Pateriopithes can also be sold as Glyopateriopithes, I pronounce it probably very weird, and Liposarcus, which you do see in trade and in um, public aquariums. So how do you tell the difference between your dith different Pateriopithes? And the most, the three, mo well, four most common, I'm not going to go over the rare ones particularly because I don't have reference photos for them that I can share. So Pteriopithes uh, paradalis has the spotted abdomen compared to Pteriopithes disjunctivus as I'm showing in a scientific paper um, has the vermiculations instead and this is on the abdomen and that's how you tell the difference between the two species and a lot do have that vermiculations on the abdomen but the actual like coloration on the fish is usually different and so you can see the actual patterning. Um, so then there's Josie Limanus which is L O O one or L twenty two and that has cholesterol rings on the abdomen um which yeah and it can be very similar to the uh um 
facing the difficulty of Pithy's Penabe, but from remembering from the taxonomic key, I don't think Penabe actually has those rings. It um, instead it has sort of like vermiculations and they have that very similar patterning as you can see. It's difficult, it's sort of like gold lines um, or spots, but more lines. <laughs> um, if you can see there, and they do sort of fade with stress cycle pterioplithes. And the most, probably actually the most common is pterioplithes gibiceps. And this is the largest, this goes to 45 centimeters standard length. So probably about fork length, adds another 10 centimeters on. This is a big fish and I've seen them quite a lot. And they get quite deep. And I say they have a giraffe patterning. But they do have the spots on the pectoral, which you can use to identify the golden variation because they will have those spots on the pectoral fin. And like, well, they do have this gold variant, but it's more of an albino, whereas Paradalis has a chocolate variant or the chocolate pleco, it's sometimes called. And this is, I think it would be called sort of, um, what's the word, leucistic of some kind. I'm not entirely sure. So Ampaceti, so as I said earlier, is synonymized, well, Anicity is synonymized with Ampaceti, and this is a real challenge. They are really easily confused with uh, Pteriopithes disjunctivus, because Pteriopithes disjunctivus, unlike um, Paradalis, sometimes does have that very distinctive, beautiful patterning, which is seen in Ampaceti. But Ampaceti is white on black. Um, with generally, I believe the white, white markings tend to be wider, but I wouldn't follow that. Generally, uh, the description I'll put up on the thing, which is very old and it's very difficult to work with, um, but it has these lines which gradually go into spots towards the pedu caudal peduncle and, well, the vermiculations on the body, so, but they tend to be more straight lines. And also very small vermiculations on the head which then moves to these um, lines on the body. And it's really difficult to describe. It is a very stunning species. Um, they aren't too rare either. Um, they're getting more and more common. And I have said they're rare before, and they're not really anymore. But if you look up pictures of the Snow King ones, they are stunning. So they are invasive, as many people have said. And a lot of... The problem I find is people can't identify their own species. Hypermastomus plecosmus is much smaller. I believe it's about 25 centimetres standard lengths. Paradalis only gets to 30, which isn't too bad, but they generally tend to be in that range of 30 centimetres to 45 centimetres standard length, so excluding the tail. They're very hard to tell apart, and I even struggle, and I spend a lot of time looking at the, this genus because I think they're amazing, and no matter how common they are. They are epic, and I would love to own them, but I really would want an indoor pond. Their activity levels do vary. They, I find gibiceps tends to be very active compared to Tereoplithes paradalis disjunctivus. I've never actually um, really had a long time to spend with Joseph Moranis and the others, um, but I have seen a few in person. I try and keep a record of photos of them and on my Facebook group, um, South American Catfish UK, I think. That's bad, I don't remember, but let me check. South American, uh, South American Catfish UK, I have photos, reference photos of quite a lot of them and that does include Panabe, but they are historical specimen ones, so they aren't the easiest to use and that I also have photos of Anna City and they aren't easy to use either. Uh, the, uh, the actual body patternings tend to lose with alcohol so the photos of the abdomen are easier to use and generally Tereoplithes is a, the species within that genus are identified by the abdomen patterning. Anyway, thank you for watching. Sorry, I probably went on a bit. Um, I'll probably try and eventually do an easier one about how to identify different species within this genus. I will try and do one for 
some of Ancestrus because Ancestrus has so many species in that genus and the half aren't identified, half we don't see in the trade, there's no photos for a lot of them. But anyway, thank you for watching.